come to see me for some company, have you? Hmm. I suppose I cannot blame you. Loneliness is such a vicious thing, isn't it? The feelings of isolation, solitude. It is one thing to voluntarily spend some time alone, but it is entirely another to be lonely. To feel the isolation around you in such a way that none seems to understand, if they have even the bandwidth to perceive you, to recognize your loneliness. It's so painful, isn't it, to be there but be unseen? To know you are there, to know all that you have, and yet to be completely and utterly alone. How many in this world toil away in isolation, with none to see their struggles, none for them to embrace, knowing that, though they suffer, they at least have some form of companionship, kinship, one who would see their struggle, see their turmoil, and with it embrace them, knowing that they are not alone, that they are witnessed and therefore heard, seen. And yet here you are, face to face with me once again, returning to that faithful voice, that seems to tug at those particular places in your heart. You do not have what you're looking for, do you? Had you such a thing, would you have any need for this conversation? <laughs> I can hardly say so. No, you're suffering in your own way. You, tortured by your loneliness, so then, how do you cope? How do you make peace with what you're feeling? Well, I have a few theories, a few ideas on what you could do. Perhaps I will grant you some insights. Myself, I recall a time when I was isolated terribly. Multiple times throughout my life, yes, but one particular where I was truly alone. None to confide in, none to speak with. In such a time, one is left to simply wonder. And then, when they are able to sleep, perhaps to dream. Until awakening once again to the darkness and the isolation of solitude that is imposed upon one, rather than a solitude that has been chosen. How does anyone make peace with such a thing? In my case, I suppose it was a matter of patience. When something becomes routine, you don't notice the time flowing quite the same anymore. When it becomes rote, repetitive. Well, then it seems to all just blend together. Yesterday becomes today, becomes two weeks from now, becomes a year ago. That is the nature of these things. And so it is through acceptance and monotony that even the mundane can be born out of that which torments us. It is acceptance through inevitability that it simply cannot be changed, and in time one either learns to accept it, or does something to change it. But what will you do in the face of your loneliness? How will you handle this very experience? Well, you are here with me, so perhaps there's a degree of your desire and will to resolve it already in progress. But what about when our words come to an end? What about when we have finished speaking? How do we turn from there? What do we become when we are truly turned away from all sources of connection and forced to simply 
be alone? The answer is to find company in oneself. To find the joys in solitude, so that loneliness becomes not a burden, but an opportunity, a chance to learn who one truly is, a chance to converse with oneself, to explore the identity that they have, and come to know what it is that they are truly knowing about themselves. For example, when one is busying themselves with the opportunities of being amongst the crowd and the thrills of being part of a society, one may find themselves adjusting according to the needs and wants of those around them. But when one is truly alone, isolated by themselves, there, truly, there is none to judge but oneself. So then, is solitude not the ideal place to discover oneself? It is there that one can truly identify who they are. And once they know that, once they are ready to take on the world, they do so with full knowledge of their own being. So then, loneliness is an opportunity, solitude and isolation a chance. They are a chance and opportunity to find oneself in the silence sitting in darkness, with none to speak to but one's own mind. Well, just what happens when the mind speaks back? That is the answer to your loneliness. The voice within. Who are you? Who are you meant to be? With none around to influence you, what sort of being will you become? That is the answer that I have found. It is there that you have the time and the chance, the ample opportunity to hone and forge and craft exactly who you are, so that you might be that which you wish to be. That alone is the answer. There is no other. <laughs> So then, my friend, I tell you, while I do appreciate your visitation and your seeking of my counsel, it is not me who you should be listening to, but the voice inside of you. Once you've learned to listen to that, you'll have no further questions for where you belong. You'll never be alone because one can always keep one's own company. <laughs> well, there you have it. I do hope you will join me again some time, for even when one does know themselves it cannot be helped, there is a degree of yearning for the companionship of others. Humans are social creatures, are they not? Even the hermit finds companionship in something. Whether or not that's a person is a different matter. But all the same, social creatures do inevitably demand social solutions. So once you've had your fill of your loneliness, and you've had your fill of your isolation, do not be afraid to reach out to the world and see what barks back at you. Do this, and you may very well find yourself in the pleasant company of companions, of friends, of lovers. But never forget, before all of that, you must first find yourself. Until next time, my friend. I bid you farewell.